Hello aspirants. Today, in this video we are going to discuss the, the current affairs of 24th January 2023. We have reviewed all the important newspapers and magazines including the Hindu, Indian Express, Down to Earth, PIB and others to bring this video to you. In this video, we will be covering the following eight topics. Ahom burial mounds in Assam, Puri Jagannath Temple, India-Egypt relations, the IT rules 2021, how does the government use its emergency powers for online content, in Swajil commissioned into Indian Navy, Nikshemitra, non-communicable and communicable diseases, trans fat. So, let's get started. Our first topic is a home burial mounds in Assam. The government has recently made the decision to put forward the Charaideo Maidams in Assam for consideration as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Charaideo Maidams in Assam are considered to be similar to ancient Egyptian pyramids by the Ta'ahom community. These maidams were used for the late medieval, 13th to 19th century CE, burials of members of the Ahom royalty, who were buried with their possessions. Out of the 386 maidams that have been explored so far, 90 royal burials at Charaideo are the best preserved and most complete examples of the Ahom's burial tradition. After the 18th century, the Ahom rulers adopted the Hindu method of cremation and began entombing the cremated bones and ashes in a madam at Charaideo. The nomination of the Charaideo maidams for UNESCO World Heritage status is significant as there currently isn't a cultural heritage site in the Northeast and it also coincides with the celebration of the 400th birth anniversary of Lachit Balfukan, a well-known Ahom leader who excelled in guerrilla warfare and led to battles against the Mughal army. The Ahom dynasty was founded in 1253 and lasted for 600 years until it was annexed by the British in 1826. Charaideo, which is located over 400 kilometers east of Guwahati, was the first capital of the Ahom dynasty. Now our second topic is Puri Jagannath Temple. The governor of Odisha has expressed support for allowing foreign nationals to enter the well-known Jagannath Temple in Puri which has been a topic of debate and controversy for many years. The Sri Jagannath Temple in Puri, Odisha is a significant Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Jagannath, a form of Vishnu. The current temple was rebuilt starting from the 10th century on the site of an earlier temple, begun by King Anantvarman Chodaganda Deva of the Eastern Ganga dynasty. The temple is well known for its annual Ratha Yatra, or Chariot Festival, in which the three main deities are pulled on large and intricately decorated temple cars, which gave the English term Jagannath. The image of Jagannath is made of wood and is ceremonially replaced every 12 or 19 years with an exact replica, unlike the stone and metal icons found in most Hindu temples. The architecture of the temple is in the Kalinga style, with a panchartha design consisting of two anurthas, two konakas, and one ratha. The temple is built on an elevated platform and is the first temple in Kalingan architecture to have all the chambers such as Jagmohana, Bhogmandpa, and Natyamandpa built along with the main temple. Coming to our third topic, India-Egypt relations. India and Egypt, both ancient civilizations, have had a long history of close relations dating back to ancient times. Ashoka, an Indian emperor had relations with Egypt under Ptolemy II as mentioned in his edicts. The president of Egypt, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, will be visiting India for three days and will be the chief guest on India's 74th Republic Day. Both countries are celebrating 75 years of diplomatic relations this year and Egypt has also been invited as a guest country during India's presidency of G20 in 2020-23. India and Egypt have strong and friendly relations, marked by historical, cultural, economic connections and deep-rooted people-to-people ties. Bilateral trade between the two countries reached a record high of $7.6 billion in 2021-2022. Over 50 Indian companies have invested around $3.15 billion in various sectors of the Egyptian economy. 
Indian and Egyptian companies are working together in science and technology, defense and other sectors. Suggestions for future include further economic partnership and collaboration on addressing economic challenges. Now moving towards our fourth topic. The IT Rules 2021 – How does the government use its emergency powers for online content? The Ministry of Information and Broadcasting recently instructed YouTube and Twitter to remove links to a BBC documentary called India. The Modi question by using the emergency provisions of the Information Technology, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code, Rules 2021. The emergency provisions of the IT Rules 2021 gives the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting the authority to issue content removal notices to social media platforms like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook in emergency situations where delay is not acceptable. These notices can be issued if the content is believed to impact the sovereignty, integrity, defense or security of India, friendly relations with foreign states, or public order or to prevent incitement to any cognizable offence. However, in the case of the BBC documentary, the ministry has not yet issued any official statement. If a platform has removed content on their own, users can approach the platform's grievance officer to dispute the action, which they are required to resolve within 15 days. However, if the platform has removed content based on the emergency provisions, the legislation does not offer any direct recourse. The government has rejected the BBC documentary as lacking objectivity and reflecting a colonial mindset. The senior officials of various ministries including the MEA, HOME, and INB have examined the documentary and found it to be an attempt to undermine the Supreme Court of India's authority and credibility cause strife between different communities and make unproven claims about the actions of foreign governments in India. Now fifth topic is INS Wazir commissioned into Indian Navy The Indian Navy has recently welcomed INS Wazir, the fifth stealth Scorpion-class submarine, into its fleet. The vessel was launched in November 2020 as part of Project 75, P-75, and successfully completed its sea trials before being delivered to the Navy in December 2022. The INS Vajir, a diesel-electric Scorpion-class submarine, has been commissioned into the Indian Navy. The P-75 project, which began in 2005, aims to build six Scorpion-class submarines indigenously by 2030. The INS Vajir is the fifth submarine to be launched under this project and is part of the Western Naval Command's submarine fleet. It is equipped with advanced stealth features, long-range guided torpedoes, and anti-ship missiles, and is capable of undertaking a variety of missions, including anti-surface and anti-submarine warfare, intelligence gathering, mine laying, and surveillance. The induction of the INS Vajir is a significant milestone for India's Project 75 and Make in India initiative. Coming to sixth topic, Niksha Mitra. The Minister of Health and Family Welfare announced that the Niksha 2.0 portal has successfully connected over 47,000 Niksha Mitra and 8.8 .8 lakh tuberculosis patients. The government is working diligently to achieve a TB-free India by 2025. The program provides three-pronged support, including nutritional, additional diagnostic, and vocational support, and encourages individuals, organizations, and corporations to come forward as donors to help patients recover. The Neekshaya to Dot Zero portal is connected to the Neekshay Web Enable Patient Management System, which is used by health officials across the country to track and manage TB cases, and functions as the National TB Surveillance System. The portal also provides opportunities for corporate social responsibility. CSR, to improve treatment outcomes and increase community participation in the effort to eliminate TB. Next topic is Non-Communicable and Communicable Diseases According to a study by The Lancet, the COVID-19 pandemic and the June 2022 floods in Pakistan have had a negative impact on the country's health indicators. 
However, the study also found that infectious and non-communicable diseases were already on the rise in Pakistan, as were disparities between regions. The study revealed that life expectancy in Pakistan improved from 61.1 years in 1990 to 65.9 years in 2019, with women recording a greater increase, 8.2% than men, 7.6%. The provinces of Baluchistan and Khyber Pakhtunakhwa had the least improvement in life expectancy. A recent study by The Lancet has found that the COVID-19 pandemic and the June 2022 floods in Pakistan have worsened the country's health indicators. However, it was already observed that infectious and non-communicable diseases NCDS, were on the rise in Pakistan and there were also disparities among regions. The study found that four types of NCDS, which include cardiovascular disease, cancers, diabetes, and chronic respiratory diseases, account for over two-thirds of deaths globally. These NCDS are caused by unhealthy behaviors such as tobacco use, physical inactivity, the harmful use of alcohol, and unhealthy diets. Additionally, premature mortality in 2019 was primarily caused by neonatal disorders, followed by ischemic heart disease, stroke, diarrheal diseases, and lower respiratory infections. Communicable diseases, on the other hand, are illnesses that are spread through direct or indirect contact with a sick person, an animal, a surface, or food. Examples of communicable diseases include the common cold, the flu, and tuberculosis. Coming to our next topic is trans fat. According to a new report by the World Health Organization, 5 billion people around the world are at risk of heart disease and death due to exposure to trans fats. The WHO has previously recommended policies for the elimination of industrially produced trans fats by 2023. The World Health Organization, WHO, has released a report stating that 5 billion people worldwide are exposed to harmful trans fats, increasing their risk of heart disease and death. Trans fats, also known as partially hydrogenated oils, are created when hydrogen is added to vegetable oil to make it more solid. These types of fats are found in packaged foods, baked items, cooking oils, and spreads, and are considered less healthy than saturated fats. The WHO has previously advocated for the global eradication of industrially produced trans fats by 2023 and has presented best practice policy options to achieve this goal. These include mandatory national limits or bans on the production and use of partially hydrogenated oils in all foods. Hope you found this video helpful. Also, you can find the notes of this video in the current affairs course on Edurif. Link of the course has been provided in the description below. For your information, Edurev offers the most structured course on current affairs, offering daily, weekly and monthly current affairs at a single place. Please subscribe to our channel to get regular notifications of our daily current affairs videos and other updates. You can give us suggestions feedback in the comments section as well. Thank you.